Hello, I'm Fast Lawyer. Today we're going to take a look at Britannic, patroness of the Mediterranean VR. It also has non-VR support. It released on the Steam Store June 19th, 2020 for the Valve Index, HTC Vive, and the Oculus Rift. It was released by developer Vintage Digital Revival LLC. It normally retails for 15 bucks. It's currently on a Steam sale, 45% off. I bought it at that special sale price and I do highly recommend it at that sale price. Keep in mind, however, this is a mostly educational experience. Um, this is like going back in time into a museum where you get to see this ship in its glory. And there are basically two different experiences. One, you get to explore the interiors of certain areas of the ship, um, the regal room, um, the boiler room. Those spaces are limited, however. They're not grand spaces for you to explore. The regal room is just one small area. However, the area is very detailed uh, with high fidelity graphics and just attention to the minor details to really give you that experience of going back in time and being able to be on this ship. And then you have basically the exterior experience and you can just explore the outside of the ship or you can also experience the sinking of the Britannic, which is very exciting in its conclusion, although it starts off very slowly. I'll get more into that later on in my review. This experience definitely is not for everyone. If you're expecting gameplay, you're not going to find it here. There are no real interactions. The interactions here just consist of being able to use full locomotion to get from one side of the ship to the other. There's also a jump button. Um, there are some markers where you can get a little bit of information on the ship. I do wish those markers were more detailed. And on top of that, there are the ambient sounds of being on the ship. I really like the quality of the ambient sounds. I thought they were well done. However, as far as the markers with the information of the ship, it's kind of missing the detailed information that you'd actually want about this historic ship. I kind of wish they had included more information. And that, I think that was a missed opportunity there. As far as the interior of the ship, I thought that was the best visuals for this game. Just looking at the regal room, the bathhouse, the boiler room, all very detailed. The quality of the graphics are excellent. These aren't the best visuals I've seen in VR, but for such a grand scale, I think it was a job well done and it really immerses you in the history of this historic ship. And you get to see both the history of this Britannic as a passenger liner, as well as its service in the war as a hospital ship. And you'll see the differences within the rooms and within the exteriors of the ship. Now, the exterior of the ship is also very detailed, but it's not as striking as the interiors. And I think the reason for that is just because of the water and the horizon. They are pretty low quality compared to everything else, and it really brings down the experience for that. Now, there is a day-night cycle, so that is pretty exciting when you're exploring the ship on the outside and then you'll see the nighttime coming and you'll see a little aurora borealis so those are nice little effects but i really think the water could have looked better and just the horizon could have been more realistic looking it's just pretty plain looking and it really takes you out of the immersion of being on this ship especially compared to the interiors, which just look immaculate in this experience. Like I said, you do have full locomotion and snap churning. Uh, this game is running on the Unreal Engine. On my RTX 3080, I did set the game to cinematic quality, which is the highest quality. And I was getting anywhere from 50 to 60 frames per second, which obviously was not ideal, but it really did not affect my enjoyment of the experience at all. So I do recommend pushing graphics to as much as you can tolerate. It really is worth it.
unfortunately there are no real interactions in this game if you get near a gate it'll just open automatically uh, if you're going downstairs you just kind of drop down and the interactions as far as the menu are all point and click and that's the extent of interactions in this game like i said there's no real interactions i would have loved to have been able to play around with a steering wheel and stuff like that unfortunately you can't do that in this game uh funny enough though you can jump off the ship you'll be all right if you jump off the ship you can always teleport back to your starting point and you can turn down the visual markers, the visual indicators for the little information tidbits if you want. Like I mentioned earlier, there's only certain areas you can explore in this game. About the only area you can really explore fully is the exterior. Even then, you're kind of blocked off from certain areas. There are certain rooms you can't get into. You can clip through almost everything. If you put your head through uh, walls you can see the interiors of the ship you can see lots of parts are missing funny enough some parts are there but you still can't reach them i'm not sure why it would have been exciting to be able to enter some areas that you've just blocked off from in this game and the interiors are, are pretty small i would like to see more interior areas of the ship to explore uh, because i really enjoyed those I think about maybe after two hours you will have done everything possible in this game so there's not really a whole lot of content in this game unfortunately however I did enjoy it and like I mentioned before there is a cinematic portion to this game where you're on the ship you're on the exterior on the top portion of the ship and the Britannic slowly starts sinking because it hits the landmine if you do the full experience it is a very slow burn so unless you are very patient, I don't recommend it. Start at the midpoint. It'll be a much more enjoyable experience because I'm sure you want to experience the ship slowly sinking. The bad part about it is that you're only on the top deck. So I would have loved to have been able to experience this from the interior. I think that would have been awesome, but you don't have that option, unfortunately. So overall, I do think Britannic VR succeeded because it made the Britannic a living history something exciting for VR so if you love historical or educational experiences or you're just into nautical experiences such as the Titanic then I definitely do recommend Britannic for you I definitely have a newfound respect for the Britannic uh, a newfound interest in it and I'm glad that I bought this if I have to rate it I would give it a 7 out of 10 there's definitely things that can be improved but Especially for the sale price, I think you're getting a great deal. Anyways, I'm Fast Lawyer. If you enjoyed my review, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, please have a wonderful day. Goodbye.